Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of WTF Live, episode number 17. For those of you who don't know me, I am Kim. I'm from Window Works. We are located in Livingston, New Jersey. We are a uh, window treatment and awning retailer. We have a showroom here in Livingston, and we are open to the public, and we also service interior designers in the area. And uh, my name is Vita. I'm the owner of Italia Inc. Window Treatments and now Awnings. <laughs> and we service the greater Philadelphia area primarily to the trade. So if you are on the market for window treatments, cushions, bedding, awnings, and uh, headboards, which we'll, what we'll be talking about today, please uh, <laughs> reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you. Hi, Regina. How are you? <laughs> and without further ado, um, yes. our topic today is headboards. Headboards, <laughs> headboards it is. <laughs> because here's what happens. I think, Kim, you probably agree about 70 to 80% of your business is window treatments. I mean, right. awnings aside, right? But right. then another 20 to 30% are all the related products. And those could be cushions, pillows, right. headboards. Headboard. Um, bed skirts, bed skirts. <laughs> you know, ev everything else that is coordinating in the room. Exactly. So, so when the designer has an idea and a vision for the scope of, uh, of the project and what the whole space should look like, it's not just the window treatments that she or he has in mind. There's also other coordinating soft furnishings. And that is exactly what Kim of Window Works and myself of Italia Inc. can support our designers on. Absolutely. So here's our first picture. Okay, so this is a headboard that was made for a guest room. And what we did here was um, we also did some custom bedding elements to this. So uh, there was a bed skirt that was made because also bed skirts can be a little tricky when you buy them off the shelf from a retail store because the drop isn't always the correct height, it puddles, it doesn't really fit the bed. So mm -hmm. a lot of times when we do um, headboards, we also do it, we also do a coordinating um, bed skirt. So um, you don't see the bed skirt in this, but it picked up on the maroon and we did a couple of uh, pillows. And what I love about this is that we were able to bring a pattern into the room on a headboard, which some people may not necessarily go with that chance of bringing that much pattern because it's yeah. a permanent piece in the room. But with this, because it was a guest room and there wasn't a lot of um, other things happening, that was an opportunity to really bring a design element into the space. So on a space that isn't, you know, an everyday use room, think about putting a pattern on a headboard. and. And I love the plaid. I personally yeah. am a big fan of plaids. So I love that you have it on the headboard, you have it on the pillows, you got fringe around the pillows. This is super yeah. cool. And then well, we did a coordinating contrasting um, cord, lip cord, a trim on uh, the lead edge of the headboard there just to kind of keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing a self well, again, to bring another decorative element into the space and where you could add a little bit of trim, that's another thing that you can do here. I also like doing, if it's for boys rooms or whatnot um like a leather uh Ooh, nice or trim yeah just so they feel has that masculine feel to it this one was just a simple cord um mm -hmm. but you know companies like samuel and son and whatnot have a leather trim that i have used often when i'm already pre-made already pre-made so you don't have to like worry about getting a faux leather or anything like that or a real leather hide you could just mm -hmm. they have a bunch of different colors so it, it just then brings your design from something that's just great but elevates it to another level anytime i can use any kind of piping or cording if mm -hmm. that's a possibility i love using that because like you said i love that word elevates it truly does elevate design and notch up yeah it's just a small little detail that just brings it from ordinary to extraordinary i feel like and so Ooh. speaking of piping and cording mm -hmm. and, and elevating the design, here I have a close-up picture of a headboard that we did. This was done for a local designer. Her name is Beth Robertson for B. Robertson Interiors out of mm -hmm. Chestnut Hill. And uh, I'm not showing the entire shape of the headboard or the entire picture. The shape is actually very similar to what you saw in the previous picture, mm -hmm. which is um, just straight and, and boxed. 
Mm -hmm. uh, what I wanted to show here are those uh, custom embellishments that we have done here in this custom uh, headboard and also you can do in your projects as well. So in the previous picture, you saw the same fabric being used for the entire headboard. Here, we actually banded out what we call it by about three to four, I think it was four inches, the perimeter mm -hmm. of the headboard. But instead of just adding the banding and just running it to the, to the main fabric, you can see there that between the band and the body or the field, uh, mm -hmm. we added the contrasting piping. So what happens is if you were to kind of look at it in, in a profile, that band is not flat. It sort of has like this um, curvular, is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> um, effect <laughs> because the piping kind of presses it in. And then the same contrasting piping is used in the back of the of the headboard this particular one it, the style is called wrapped and there's also a style that's called boxed i think the previous picture was most likely boxed box? right because mm -hmm. i saw the piping in the front exactly. here you don't see the piping in the front because again of that curvature but the piping is in the back it's towards the wall it's not readily seen from the front but it's certainly seen from the side and just the knowledge that that custom element is there is 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 top notch so Number one. Number two, I really want to point your attention to the incredible job we did <laughs> mitering that fabric. Yeah. Can I just put myself on the back, you know, because who, who, if I don't do it, who will? <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was a striped fabric and you can see how in the corner we truly mitered it and that, that miter match is mwah, just perfect. So we were like super giddy about that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on our end over here. And then another detail that I want to mm -hmm. show is something that we do often and that's, that's a special measure that you first of all have to take and then ultimately specify it to your workroom. Most rooms, bedrooms, have the baseboard uh, molding along the perimeter of the room. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to not notch out the headboard like we did here, that headboard will never be flush to the, or it can, there's, there's other things that you can do, but oftentimes yeah. what happens, it ends up like banging against the wall because there's a little bit of a space, usually mm -hmm. about three quarters of an inch to an inch between the headboard and the wall. Oh, hey, Renee joined us on Instagram. And um, <laughs> hey, Mimi, and, and there's Mimi. So, so it's really uh, good and smart to think about ways to uh, flush the headboard against the wall as close as possible. And this particular notch out that we did, kind of scribing along the molding, does exactly that. So, another little tip for you. And that's also something too that if you're working with a workroom and you're not local to our area, um, the workroom should have that you know, attention to detail if they've been doing this a very long time. And if they don't, then bring it up. You always have to... Um, you have to spec it, really. I mean, I don't think that's yeah. a standard for a lot of workrooms. You have to specify it. And, but most importantly, you have to measure for it. Right, right. No, and it's always... I always say I got burnt once, not on a headboard, but because of that, it was a, a an air vent, oh. a ceiling air vent that was... I had a three-layer window treatment, a swag, uh, jabos, a sheer and drapes. Mm -hmm. So my board had to be at least 10 inches and we just had 11 inches from the wall to the front of the vent. So anytime you're doing custom, always, my advice is always look up. <laughs> and look down. Down. Yes. <laughs> Smart you, you, are. <laughs> never, you never know what element could be in the way. Cause there could be vents in the way of something like this. And, um, so yeah, in the baseboard. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Live the miter and the detail of the baseboard. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So this headboard here was created for a um, tween's bedroom. We had done this before when, you know, when we were doing beyond the window treatment here and we wanted to show uh, I remember what, this shot. what else you could do. So with this particular um, room you can't tell because of the bedding we also did upholstered side rails and a uh, front rail so this way this client did not want the headache of a bed skirt and then um in order for you not to see the box spring we also made like a cover a darker gray cover for it so that mm -hmm. way it just all kind of blended and you didn't see a white box spring if you know when you had the bedding pulled up and whatnot. So it all kind of coordinates and matches. So that's another way that you could really make something super custom is think of what is the bedding going to look like when you have, you know, the comforter, the duvet pulled over. Do you want to see that white box spring? 
there because it's not so pretty, especially when you're dealing with darker colors. Now, yeah. with this, we were also dealing with um, the client's metal frame. So we basically built the upholstered rails around that frame. So we it, it was a lot of detailed measuring had to go into that to make sure that it could fit. You don't see here that the inside was notched to fit the rails and whatnot. Yes. And uh, yeah, and then because um, of the carpeting and whatnot, and we couldn't sit the headboard flush. There was a couple of elements. So we were able to anchor it to ah. the, with some brackets. So that's another yeah. way that if you don't have the ability because of other things happening that you don't mm -hmm. always necessarily have the ability to notch around the molding, there are ways that you can um, bracket your headboard to the wall. I had attach to attach it essentially. Yeah. So there's still a gap between the headboard and the wall, but at it's, least it's attached and it doesn't attached, bang against yeah. it like, every time you move around. <laughs> right. And I had to even do that in my personal home because my headboard has a brass frame around it. And then it has um, its leather with channeling and, and brass frames along the back. So it doesn't sit flush against the wall. So Carlos had to adapt. Um, he actually used an awning bracket to make oh. it work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good installer can yeah. jerry rig anything <laughs> and figure it out yeah but so those are a couple of things to keep in mind nice and so actually speaking of uh headboard and sideboards and footboard this is exactly what we're showcasing mm -hmm. here and in this particular case it may not be the prettiest picture in terms of the final product right. but it is a very illustrative picture in terms of exactly what kim was talking about that was covered by the bedding in the previous picture so this is all fully custom. So custom mm -hmm. headboard, in this case, um, uh, tufted. Mm -hmm. and it has uh, what are called wings, like these side wings. So it's like the, these these uh, side pieces um, on the side okay. of the headboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it has side rails or, or side boards. And then it has the front rail or, or the front board, we call it. So, and then in this particular case, these are upholstered legs. Too. Mm -hmm. and uh, and you can kind of see inside it's all nicely finished and uh, you have these um, right now exposed wooden um, mm -hmm. rails which is on, onto which the mattress would go either the box spring or in some instances mattress directly is just up to the customer at this point so so here we here you go before anything's put on you see exactly what's happening on the inside exactly. and the outside um, and this particular one was also uh, done for a very talented uh, B. Robertson interiors here out of Chestnut Hill. Nice. So that also, this also shows, because in the other one, our rails went down to the ground, essentially. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want any space. Mm -hmm. So this shows another way that you could also do, you could add legs. So if you want that, you know, space between the bottom, from the floor and the bottom of the rail, upholstered. Uh, legs is another option as well. Yes, actually, that's a really good point. So whenever you put the the bed low enough to the ground where you can actually hit the ground and not have the bed skirt or not mm -hmm. have the legs or anything like that that's really great and and there the, the bed itself sits pretty low usually mm -hmm. unless you make it up with super high mattresses in, in my instances a lot of times what I'm finding the reason these homeowners do legs usually they're they're moms of small kids they're super practical <laughs> And they're like, I just need it to be high off the ground so that I can vacuum underneath and mm -hmm. whatever gets under the bed, I can actually get it out. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, for, for, for every phase of life, there's a different need exactly. and specification. <laughs> but that's the beauty part of going custom. You could really make whatever size you need those rails to be. That's true. Okay, so this is a headboard that was... Um, designed by uh, Susie Chusin. And with this headboard, um, this room had, we'll talk about this window treatment in another, uh, in another post or in another video, but this, we had very tall ceilings here. And what she decided to do was create shadow boxes on the wall to really bring your eye up. But with that, she had the shadow box that lined up um, almost to the bottom of the cornice. So she decided to make the headboard almost touch the top of that shadow box. Mm -hmm. And that's the great part of going custom because you were, she was able to really specify the height of this headboard and like where she wanted the uh, tufting. What you don't see in the picture is instead of doing a self well, 
there's uh, nail heads mm -hmm. along the edge, which just gives it a little bit of that bling. That's a really nice um, touch. Yeah, just and, and doing it on the profile, it is a slight box, but she also wanted it to have a little bit of padding in the front so that this way it wouldn't be so flat. Um, so yeah, and that's that's what I love about the spaces because everything in that room is about bringing the eye up because of the, the triangle window that we were dealing with and whatnot. So that is, um, everything had to be to scale. So that's why going with custom, you could really tailor the headboard and scale it to the space of the room. And I know we're talking about headboards today, but that window treatment, like, oh my yeah. God. I mean, even I'm getting like heart palpitations, even thinking <laughs> how you guys designed that, and installed that one. <laughs> that one was, yeah, I'm there, there's stories for days on we'll, that one. We'll, so we'll have know, to, there we'll will have be a different to, story. <laughs> yeah, we have sketches. I found sketches on file the other day. So yeah, we'll we'll get into depth on that one. We can we do a whole should. episode on that. We <laughs> should, we should do a whole episode just like, we, we can title like in depth or something like in depth yeah. episode, in window treatments in depth. I don't know, we'll have to figure we'll, it we'll out. Figure but I'll it like out. It. Yeah. For those really challenging windows. Yeah. Okay, so um, this this project. So th the theme of my presentation today seems to be uh, Beth Robertson interiors because uh, all of my even though we do headboards for everybody else, but she's truly talented and uh, she mm -hmm. does a lot of bedrooms and a lot of headboards. So we are of course happy to oblige and work with her and support her and everything that she does. This particular project is again hers for a client in Flower Town, and this was a very brave uh, master bedroom mm -hmm. <laughs> ordered by the client for the master bedroom because the whole thing, as you can see, is done in those red colors. So this was a super amazing fabric, I think by Schumacher, if I'm recollecting it correctly for the headboard. Mm -hmm. And in this like case, you can also see the bed skirt as well. Yep. And uh, this is also boxed. So not wrapped in this, um, in this instance, but boxed, which, which means that instead of that curvular um, look and, and style, it, it's actually flat at the top and on the sides and you have piping in the back and then mm -hmm. piping in the front. So it truly is like very kind of geometric versus curved. And uh, mm -hmm. then we uh, contrast piped it with um with white like an off-white type of fabric in terms of piping and then there's also mm -hmm. a grow grain tape that we ran kind of as an inset on the headboard i think about three or four inches in inside the headboard and then we also ran the same white fabric inside the contrasting kick pleats it's kind of peeking through there mm -hmm. in the center of the mm -hmm. bed skirt and you also you don't see in the picture but the white fabric also is featured in the corner kick pleats as well so it's a very red and white kind of theme very powerful very very dramatic. It's in your face for sure. There is no hiding yep. from it, but this is exactly what this customer wanted and Beth executed. Now with that trim, Vita, let's just chat about the, the tape trim. Um, did you guys miter that uh, with the shape or you obviously picked something that was flexible in terms of to make mm -hmm. that curve? Yeah, this was a very flexible grow grain mm -hmm. tape, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which anybody who doesn't know grow grain tape is is a very pliable, very soft. And it usually it, sometimes it's flat, but usually has um, small ridges just to mm -hmm. add a little bit of, um, I guess, interest to the solid look of the fabric, I mean, of the trim. And uh, in, in we, we didn't miter it in terms of color cutting it because anytime you cut the tape, it starts fraying. So I think anytime you can eliminate, if you have, you have to, you have to, but anytime you can eliminate it, you should. So because it was so soft and pliable, we were actually able to kind of um, fold it and then turn it, run it, then fold it, and then and then run it again. But the look of it is if it, as of it is as if it were a miter. <laughs> can you say that again? I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Lenore has a question. Do you ever, uh, do you ever make bottom frames with legs to cover box springs without a headboard? Yes, you can do that. I have art above a bed, but no room for a headboard. I want to, to clean. Okay. Um, yeah, you can sure. rails. Absolutely. It would be the same thing. So if I were to to go back over here, it would be the same headboard. I uh, just, I mean, the same, same concept. Step back. 
the same concept, thank you, Kim, <laughs> same logic, but, you know, delete the headboard, it would just be the bottom uh, platform. That well, This is what it is. It's a yeah. platform bed, okay. and I think, Lenore, what you're asking for is, can do you guys make a custom upholstered platform without the headboard? Yes. And yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> Hi, Natasha. Natasha joined us on in Instagram. Hi. <laughs> in, in the world of custom, we can really make whatever you need us to make. I mean, pretty you know, much a, a bag for a pig. A I know. Back, so <laughs> if I can make a bag for a pig, you guys, I can do anything. <laughs> yeah. so, if you have a picture of it and it can be recreated, it might take a couple of, um, you know, brainstorming meetings and whatnot, but we've, seen it all i mean you saw that triangle window nobody thought we can get that one done that's crazy and even in my world you guys i'm so impressed with kim right now and window works you have no idea and, that <laughs> and was, i've seen the picture before this is the second time it appeared yeah. and every time just like oh my god and that was done like 12 years ago like right at wow. the start of like everyone doing motorization but anyway okay so this um room was for a model that we did for joan stapleman of uh Matt Cali. And what was unique about this is that with model apartments, especially um, these higher end units, when they're, especially with Joe, when she's designing it, she wants the client or future renter to really get an idea of like furniture placement in the room. And with this room, because of the way that there were windows, the way the, way the windows were placed, there was only really one solid wall where you could put a dresser. So with this headboard, we didn't want to go too high because you didn't want to block the view and the glass of the uh, window. So we made, um, I forget how high the headboard was. This was a couple years ago, but this is just another idea. It's okay to place a headboard or a bed in front of a window. You just kind of have to play with the proportions here. We also added just a simple tufting detail because again, it was a rental. We didn't want to go too crazy, but in this situation, you had to go custom because you couldn't really find something that fit the proportions of the space that you wanted to execute to say, Hey, this is what you can do. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. Okay, and our final picture for today is this pretty huge bed. <laughs> so this is a monstrosity. Um, actually, you know, I, I did say this was uh, all about Beth Robertson. I stand corrected. This is a different designer, also out of a uh, Chestnut Hill Flower Town area of Philadelphia area. Uh, this was... Um, Paige Brady Designs, who is a the sweetest, sweetest uh, woman. I just I adore her, and uh, she's an incredibly talented designer too. And um, now her daughter joined her ranks too, so it's a uh, oh, uh, mother daughter team. And I just can't wait to see what they uh, cook up together. This project was done, I want to say, about a year or so ish ago. And here's what's special about this project. So this bed, a monstrosity. Mm -hmm. We did not create the bed. The bed was already there, but it had a completely different fabric on it that mm -hmm. needed to be redone. So the question is, do we dismantle the bed, take it to the workshop, to our workroom, recover it, and then bring it back on site, put it, the whole thing back together? You know, the, the potential intricacies of putting it together. I mean, it's like opening a Pandora's box. We had no idea what may or may not happen if we did that. So how does that saying go? If Muhammad doesn't go to the mountain, the mountain comes to Muhammad or the other way around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's exactly what we did. We couldn't bring this headboard over to the workroom. So we brought the workroom into the customer's home. Mm -hmm. So this is where on site we actually, we, we, you know, obviously stripped the bedding, took out the mattress so that we can go kind of inside of this whole bed situation. We mm -hmm. stripped the existing fabric. We, you know, unrolled the brand new fabric. We put it on. We, this was a huge repeat. So we had to be very careful about centering the repeat. Then it's a little hard to see in the picture, but there's double piping, double, I have a big screen here. No, it's single piping, single mm -hmm. piping going along the perimeter of the bed and that wooden framing. So, I mean, everything, it was it was top notch. It was so beautifully done. And we were able to do it right on customer site, which listen, if this is what you have to do, then sometimes that's what you have to do. And we were happy mm -hmm. to do it for this customer. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, everyone. Well, that is the episode uh, 17 on headboards. Um, we do have some free goodies that we wanted to let you know about on uh, the Window Works website. We have Architectural Digest is not coming. 10 things you need to know about window treatments. Luann wrote this ebook a couple years ago. Um, it's free. So if you just head on over to the Window Works website and uh, you can request your copy. Awesome. And for our part from Vitalia Inc., you will also have a little free gift. It is 30 and a 37 and a half <laughs> window <laughs> treatment design ideas to use immediately. Steal, swipe, and make your own on your next design project. You can grab your free download lookbook at vitaliainc.com. And then to keep up with all things Luann and the podcast and the audio version of WTF, where this idea originated from, be sure to follow Luann on Instagram at Luann Nigara and uh, to listen to all the episodes that Luann and Vita have done so far on um, window treatments. Uh, if you head on over to her website and click the podcast tab and you hit all episodes in the search tool, you can hit hashtag WTF and all the episodes will pop up for you. And Luann and I always have so much fun mm -hmm. together. We actually just recorded our episode number, I think it was 11 or 12. I can't remember. Yes. And we've been at it for about, for about um, a year now. Mm -hmm. And we do about one, uh, one episode a month or so on yep. a Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how the whole WTF idea originated, started from. And uh, that's how Kim and I kind of uh, <laughs> evolved there into this pictorial more of a <laughs> of a visual reference uh, of WTF uh, but definitely listen to Luann's podcast and uh, our WTF episodes and if you are in the New Jersey, New York area, and you want to connect with us here over at Window Works for any window treatment and awning needs, um, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Window Works and here on Facebook. If you have any questions, you can always email us over at info at windowworksnj.com. Wonderful. And for our part at Vitalia Inc., if, if you are a designer in the greater Philadelphia area, I would love, love, love to hear from you. Our specialty is to support interior designers and the architecture firms who are trying to get into the interior design component of the projects. Uh, we are here to make your life easier, to take the stress off your shoulders, to just uh, give you the peace of mind, knowing that the window treatments portions of your projects are taken care of. It is a 24 seven type of job for us. We are a mighty <laughs> team of five and we do this all the time, making our designers happy. And uh, ultimately that's what gives us the satisfaction and the pleasure as well. So please connect with me. I hang out on Instagram all the time at Vitalia underscore Inc. And my contact information is right here as well. And I would love to hear from you guys. All right, everybody. Well, that's it. We will see you next week for episode 18. Because if it's Friday, it's WTF live. <laughs> we can wait to see you. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.